This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast, episode 428. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Peachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. And uh, it's time to, to get at it. We are, uh, there's all the news of the CES hangover, and, and there's plenty that I know a lot of you guys shared out there as well. And we're going to get to a lot of it in our, our favorites of the week, our awesome things of the week. With us, first of all, he is back in the studio. He is the gadget guru from Big Bank International Esquire. He is John Chichilla back with us in Studio A. No longer sick. It, no longer it, sick. It, 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 it's not just good to be back. It's good not to be I sick. I said you're one of two major podcast hosts on this network that have been down with sickness, down with the sickness down for with the, disease. the first couple of weeks of the year here. Do we have do we have video? Oh, I just didn't do that yet. <laughs> That's all that is. You're still you're still you're still getting the podcast machine running. I'm getting the podcast machine rolling. Also back with us. I usually joined us last week as well, but Crazy Krause back with us as well. He's also a gadget gentleman at Bank Bank International Esquire. Hello, how are you today? I'm working on your you I I now that you're on more often, I'm going to work on and solidify uh, uh, the show title for you. Thanks. How does 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 that work for you? Does a gadget gentleman? Sure. (laughs) You with your. You know, this was the one thing I told uh, producer Missy earlier. Mm -hmm. This is the first and only time that I can actually tell John that I have been on the show more than he has this year. Yes, you have (laughs) this year. It's only episode two. You yes. are you have contributed more to the awesome cast of 2019 <laughs> than Chilla or Dutters. After <laughs> next week, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have some good guests uh, lined up here in the coming weeks. I know John Carmen's on there. Uh, Bobby Cherry is going to be joining us. He's been doing a digital news something or other. I don't know. I'll ask him what, what the hell he's doing over at WTA these days. Uh, but uh, looking forward to getting some different faces in here, trying to trying to step up. So we we do have kind of a mix of people and get some different opinions, and it's not just all t- us talking about the same things all the time. So, uh, Apple, <coughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, what's on your wrist hey, over I'm, there? I'm <laughs> very. I try to be very fair across the platform. I'm doing some Look testing for work. Look at you, Windows Android yeah, guy with your Apple Watch. That. See who says I can't get along with others? Yes. And mm-hmm. by the way, what is that tablet you're holding right there? <laughs> android 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 tablet yep yes. android phone <laughs> android phone well in the you, bag you over said there. in the bag is an apple device <laughs> yes there is oh well, there's two over or the, three apple devices the, over there the across i mean you guys test i mean this is what you guys do right you're, yeah, you're that's it. You, exactly. you have to look at all the all the platforms mm-hmm. and that's why i think it's good that you guys are on here because you guys are kind of touching all the you got it's it's kind of this touching is, all the things you're touching all the things you're touching all the gadgets <laughs> and the and the widgets and the doodads um because <laughs> usually the people that do that are are you know journalists and 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 you know tech pundits and things like that so i think you guys got bring a different perspective that's why i kind of like the conversations we have because i feel like we hear we have the same conversations on other tech podcasts over and over again because of the angle they come from mm-hmm. so no this is this is exactly what we want to do here but this is the awesome cast you can check out everything on awesomecast.com that's where you can subscribe to us rate us on your favorite podcast app or watch video versions on facebook and youtube look for the awesome cast and um you can also email us, us email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com, at awesomecast on the Twitter, and Facebook, uh, awesomecast. So that's where we have the Facebook uh, live feed going every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. I'm sorry, no, it's the other show. Every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time, Dave Potter is out there with us. Brandon is joining us from the KC as well as producer Missy's in there making sure that everything keeps in the line. With all, okay, it's usually us she's got to worry about. Um, also, thanks to our streaming partners, the Rivers Edge PGH.com, not the Rivers Edge PGH.com, 
get that right. And that's uh, every Saturday at 9 a.m. They carry us over there, the latest episode, as well as our friends on the West Coast at the 405media.com weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern time. And if you want to be part of the studio audience or if you're interested in looking into some great advertising options, I know we had a lot of new uh, people we were, we were talking to and getting the word out on and hopefully do some more here in the near future, too, around the uh, Christmas break. You can have awesome cast at SorgatronMedia.com and have a conversation with producer Missy. If you want to support the show uh, because you get any kind of value or anything out of it here, uh, go hit up our Patreon page at Patreon.com slash Awesome Cast. Our friends at the Coffee Club, $5 level, Matt Weller and John Dickey DeGore, as well as Matt, uh, blah, 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 as well as, nope, that was the next line, says fan of the show, $1 level. And that's our friend uh, Mike Fedor as well uh, supporting us. Uh, I think the longest supporter of the awesome cast on our Patreon page. Thank you so much. You guys literally help us uh, keep the lights on. Literally, I bought some lights from Amazon uh, to replace the ones that have gone out in the studio. <laughs> so uh, over at patreon.com slash awesome cast. Let's get into our awesome things of the week. Guys, I want to talk about the small world ride at CES. Did you guys see this? I did not. So Google, apparently, they... <laughs> they I, and i don't know like uh, to what to what state they built this i think the i i'm in my imagination and what i've seen from the article i i think they built an entire it's a small world after all like ride at in a parking lot somewhere around las vegas for ces it, it looks like kind of looks like it's in, in a is it on like a parking deck like a is it multi-tier? I think it is multi-tier because when they come out, like they, they, there's like a kind of a door opening situation and, and they come out and you see like, like, like some of the, the convention centers and everything in the, in the image and, and it comes back around. So this is uh, the, the video I saw and I understand there's a 360 video that they put out. This is a, I'm looking at CNET CES uh, for, for this one, but it was, it's a, it's, it's a show off for a Google assistant where um the guy is it's, it's like a father and he is uh um trying to get a, a cake for grandma's birthday party and using google assistant to like you know tech traffic and and everything like that um it, it does remind me a whole lot of garfield's nightmare at uh at kennywood uh personally uh <laughs> but uh that's my experience i haven't been to disney world so uh, it's a tech it's a dark ride yeah it's a dark ride yeah is that what they call it yeah, like the, even something old, like this. The, well, it's the Garfield down, but it was called something else years the ago. The old mine or something. Yeah, like, yeah. No, it wasn't the old mine. The Garfield one was the boat one. The boat ride. Yeah. Yeah, the boat um, ride. Oh, right. The old mine was the uh, was now the haunted house or something. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but this was a it was a pretty it was pretty a giant production um, that they were involved with here. Uh, for this and i i just thought it was kind of awesome that you know and i know this is giant insanely if you, you want to say even wasteful uh marketing because to build something like you know we, we always hear about the you know crazy booths at a ces right and this kind of this that. just kind of exceeded it and, and i don't know if this is the one there was they were talking about one on one one of the shows i was listening to about uh so and so had to come in like be the first in and had to be on the first floor of the convention center in order to do their booth. And I, I, I didn't catch what they brought in or anything like that. But I mean, that's that's what these these events do, I guess. So, I, I Carlos, did you did you have any others like that kind of stuck out for the big crazy, holy crap? Well, there was the <laughs> self driving car. I don't know if you saw. Um, they were giving rides. Okay, in that, downtown. Was that IBM? Who was it? Watson. I can't. It might have been Watson. I for, I forget the company. It, it looked kind of like a smart car. Yes, but there was no driver. Yeah. Mm. Um, MK. Well, what's his Marquise Marquez Brownlee? He did an, a piece on it where um you know he's riding around in the back seat of the car, sitting behind what would be the driver, and the you know steering wheel's turning itself, and it basically gave him a ride a, a through um you know. That would be so amazing. Las Vegas. To be able to just even even to go from like here to my dad lives like on the other side of Monroeville and Marysville. Uh, just even to go that far and be able to just like whip out the laptop or play a game yeah. or mm -hmm. just not have to worry about driving. <clears throat> it's coming, man. It, it, it's I, it's inevitable. I don't know if it, I feel like Pittsburgh's not gonna be one of the first places that gets something like this. You know, but mm -hmm. um but I mean but it's showing that technology. I mean we're this is a thing more and more. I, I'm, I'm going to be, uh, you know, fortunately it looks like I'm going to an auto drive competition where they're 
going to, and I can't wait to show you guys pictures from the stuff I'm hearing happens at these things. Uh, but you know, like where they're taking these, these, these cars and, you know, taking them through like, like kind of like the nuke town fake cities, mm-hmm. you know? Okay. And, but it's just a neighborhood obstacle for you to drive around in with your automated car. Oh, that's awesome. That's so phenomenal. Like, like things like that, like it's, it's coming and everybody's putting stuff into this. Right? Everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it, man. Somebody's going to crack it sooner or later, right? Well, speaking of auto- self-driving vehicles, did you hear about down in Arizona where they're <laughs> doing some self-driving car tests? Yeah. And there's a group of people like physically damaging mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the self-driving vehicles. Yeah, this has been going To around. the point where they have a guy who's standing on a corner. Pulls out a gun. I don't believe he shot the car, but he pulls <laughs> out he a did, gun. He did threat, I think he did threaten the car with a gun. And yes. like threaten. Yes. Why? I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, I, I because Arizona, I think, is where they're doing the call call a car on yes. Waymo and go yes. to Walmart and to get your yes. groceries kind of thing. So I think it has something to do with that setup. And it's I think it has to do with they're worried about losing jobs. Something. It just I mean there is and there is going to be an ever increasing anti AI, anti automation like movement. But we're talking smashing windows, uh cutting tires, yeah. people on the street stopping at strange intervals to try to throw off the car. Yeah. And like, it's crazy. If people feel threatened by this technology for whatever reason, whether it be, this is where they've lost their job and that's something they can point at or whatever the case Mm -hmm. may be. Like they're going to like, this is, this is, that is, that's the beginning of this. Right. Um, Like when there's just as tight as we are about technology, just paying people that are not, and yes. for real, realistic or unrealistic reasons, like you know, there, there are you know a lot of people looking at the other sides of things like that. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, so no, that was kind of a fun thing of the oh, you know, that was a very CES holy crap, you know, experience story. And I love like the video I'm, I'm seeing on a gadget. You just see everybody else with their phone because everybody's taking video of what's <laughs> going on to use like on their site or in general. So. It was this weird, and and I guess I guess I didn't see this, but they were talking about on one show how um, there was like the grandma at the end you can talk to using the Google Assistant technology. So oh, that's that's, awesome. that's you know as as somebody that got a really kick out of the um, Hershey uh, ride at their <laughs> at the at the chocolate factory mm-hmm. in, in Hershey where the cows like singing to you and stuff. Um, like I, I'm kind of this, this this is kind of fun. So I'd be excited for this if I was at uh, CES. So. Anyways, um, Chilla, what's your awesome thing? So I have, I have, I have two. I, I think I should get two because I missed last week. Sure, why not? You get, you get, give us your pre CES and your post CES one. So, did you see on iJustine's page the modular screens? No. So if you click the first link there, it's gonna okay. play. I don't know. If I don't there's know a, why. Like I have not taken in much of. It might be a of, commercial. It might be a commercial. There might be a quick commercial, and then okay, you'll be able to skip it. Is this yeah. the thing about Mamma Mia? Yes. Okay. So those are screens. Oh. So what it is is it's modular, borderless screens that you can kind of put together mm-hmm. to make one big screen, or you can then take them back apart and kind of convert them into separate screens, switching inputs and whatnot. I just look at it as if you could do this even in your house, right? Think about you're having a bunch of people over for the Super Bowl. Imagine being able to collect all the screens from in all your over your house and, mm-hmm. and yeah. put them together to that make like the awesome one idea. giant screen. Has anybody ever, ever anybody here ever been to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I have not. I have not. So if you go to their like Rock and Roll Hall of Fame like feature like best of show and it's like this rocked out thing and there's big speakers and mics and stuff, the screen moves and it's synced with a projector. But it's like they come together and it's a bigger, wider screen. They show everybody and then it goes out and like the other people playing instruments go out and stuff. This is what this reminds me of. Uh, for those on audio, so basically it's a uh, imagine kind of just a a very, very long LCD panel that's showing um, a picture of uh, like, you know, a, a forest or something. And then like one part of it kicks over to like a Mamma Mia trailer while the other part, like the other square of it turns into a different design and slides away. Um, so it's it's so. 
and, and it looks like like I'm seeing one that's like in her background that's like slide it's vertical and there's like a, a piece of it sliding up and down and connecting with one above it. So multiple Mul- sizes, multiple shapes right. can be made out of mm-hmm. this, right? Yes. So what would what would Chilla do with this in the your house? I would put one in like like I said, I would take and disperse them around my house as like the the typical TV in the room, and then when people come over, mm-hmm. have some kind of crazy transform TV, crazy wall mount inlay that i could put them all together and hang them on the wall as one ginormous tv modular screens this is a samsung micro led um she apparently apparently she has a sponsorship with samsung because it's hashtag ad in this as well so yeah you know she did yeah she did a bunch of uh samsung coverage mm-hmm. pre, although one of the things or, i the weekend before when i looked at it was do you ever get those moments where like you know you're sitting at home with the family and not everybody wants to watch the same thing. <laughs> you could literally, okay, hang on. Everybody can still be in the room. Okay, yes, maybe you'd have to put some. But kinda... when you agree, you got a bigger, nicer TV. Yeah, you know, but you know, you know what I mean. Like you could put in some headphones or something. What? Everybody's still in the family room, but you could have, and even for the football game. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know, on a regular Sunday, you got somebody wants to watch Steelers, somebody wants to watch Cowboys. You could run multiple games like in on Back to the Future wall. too when he comes into the room and says, and he rattles off a bunch of TV channels and they all, and they they all show on. up exactly yeah, yeah yeah oh that's how I, I I've been talking about this on the other show that's how I'm going to start catching up with pro wrestling is I'm going to have multiple screens because I have multiple screens and I'm going to put all the wrestling programs on at one time so it only takes me like two hours instead of thirteen there you go and I'm caught up for the wrestling on the week. Just like Ozymandias and Watchmen. By the way, I started watching Watchmen again. I'm, okay. like, I'm taking it in chunks. I'm taking it in chunks. Just like, you know, when I go to bed, you know. Because it's been a while since I've watched it. And it's on um, Netflix, I think. So. What is it? Watchmen? Like the old movie? Like from like 10 years ago. Like from the old book from the 80s. Yeah. 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 yeah but it's the movie. Yes. So what are you watching in like 20 minute increments? Yes. Okay. He- he falls asleep. It's just, yeah, then, okay. I, got, then I go to sleep because I'm tired. And I'm tired of looking at... Dr. Manhattan's blue penis. So I'm moving Whoa, on. Whoa, yeah. Um, it's part of the movie, okay? okay? It's part of it, okay? We all read the book, right? Everybody read it? It's in the, it's in the hoopla. Go, go pick it up. We'll go read it if you haven't. I was trying to remember what they changed at the end because I remember like they like wildly changed the ending to it from the book and I couldn't remember what they I never I never read the book. Well, it's a little weirder. Hmm. So. Plus, I read the book in issues, so... It just, oh, there like, you go. I mean, it's just like there's like a logical mm-hmm. like part to end. You know, and you're like, oh, I'll pick this so up. So in tomorrow. your brain, yeah. that, that that's that yeah. book is over. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, this was issue issue seven. We're yep. good. Moving on. Okay. Anyways, uh, you have a second one. I have a second. You do one. have a second one. Yes, and it is another Samsung, and I am not sponsored by Samsung. Although no, no. I'm like nice. I, I chilla um, is not sponsored by <laughs> Samsung. <laughs> um, they also announced that their 2018 and 2019. TVs are getting iTunes mm-hmm. and AirPlay 2. Mm-hmm. And I apologize if you guys talked about I think this. we did touch on this because I think this and just came out as a story yes. okay. when we went on air last but it, week. But, but we speculated that it, we were hoping it would be backwards compatible, but I guess it's not going to be. It's all backwards new. compatible to where? Older How? Samsung? To older Samsung. So, yes, it'll be this, it year's, be. Yes. this year's model. This I'm year's. sorry, last year's model. Okay. okay. Any any device made in 2018 will get iTunes. Will get iTunes and AirPlay too. Okay. Okay. And we're and talking any, about movies and not like movies, music, right? Not whole, not I can download uh, Aldo's Adventure and play it on my Samsung TV. It's an no, that's it's a game an that I play. It's a game that you can yes. play on Apple TV. Yes. Or yeah. Sonic Sonic no. Two. So it's not gonna be it's not gonna be an Apple TV replacement. No. But what this all this is going to do is give you all of the Apple services, like Apple Music, all of your library, any of the movies you've purchased. This is so funny. It's another endpoint. It, it's yeah. another endpoint. This is so funny to me because to me I feel like movies anywhere has killed that. I like totally, the need for this. Right? I agree. Yeah. But there are certain movies that I have purchased that are not part of yes. movies anywhere. Yes. I have a, a stack of Lionsgate ones on Voodoo, yes. for instance. So, so this can potentially... 
depending on who your service of choice and where you purchase things, this could help solve for that. Mm. Um, the other thing that I think that's actually personally more important than that, than, than the iTunes piece is the airplay too. So as someone who is constantly casting things to screens mm -hmm. and not just in my home life, but as we look at business ways to do this in a secure manner, mm -hmm. um, and the fact that nine times out of 10, this person wants to do Miracast, this person wants to do AirPlay, this person wants to Chromecast, this person has some crazy dongle thing that mm -hmm. is proprietary, yuck, yuck, blah, blah. Um, to me, the more that Samsung can do to make their devices cross-platform, so they already do Miracast, I think they call it All Share or something yeah, like right, that. Right, right, right. But it, it's... But it's based on the same thing as Chromecast, isn't it? No, it's, no, it's something different. It's based on something a little bit different. Okay. Um, I think Chromecast is a variant of Miracast. But I, I'm with, I want Podner in the chat room here. Uh, streaming your, your device to a TV, I can see throwing apps to a TV. Right. Really? And honestly, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because we do have AirPlay. And you can AirPlay your phone in some games. Yeah. Right? And you can... some. There's even a handful of games that you get like a second screen experience. Yeah. Where like if the four of us are playing, I can't remember what the racing game was, but is it Angry the, Birds or something or Asphalt? I don't. I think it might have been Asphalt. Okay. If if you all air, you can all air play at the same time, and it puts a four up. Mm -hmm. So you get your view on your phone, but it's four up on the screen. Oh, very cool. Nice. So there's different there's different things developers can do with the, with the AirPlay they technology. Do they? Like, I'm getting really sad about how many games are not coming out for Apple TV. Yeah. Like, Sega stopped at, like, two or three Sonic. I don't understand why. Yeah. No, I, I don't get it. it. It's frustrating. Anyways. But, but the, the fact that the Samsung devices are going to have not just iTunes, but more importantly to me, a multitude of ways to wirelessly display to them, mm -hmm. I think is, is huge. Not to mention that I will say their, their interface for a multitude of applications and their app store is pretty decent from Netflix to YouTube to whatever. Um, I see the, it'll be interesting to see how the Comcasts and Verizon Fioses and Time Warner Cable and, everybody how they solve for this yeah they have or been, compete they've been interesting in their decision making so far yeah anyways uh crazy kraus yes you sir. got some crazy bluetooth headset action yes because you know everybody knows i love my bluetooth headsets you do but um this is one that i've actually had for a while now i've had it for quite a few months and i just keep Ooh. telling myself that i'm gonna bring it on the show and show it off but it's this plantronics uh 5200 what do they call it uh the voyager, voyager 5200 Ooh. wireless headset and i also bought the charging case mm -hmm. so you know the phone has a little place where you can connect it you can actually even uh and this usb look, this looks like a typical one year just a single ear yeah year. this is the work yeah mode not the two the two years for like when i'm on the bus and i want to block out the world mm -hmm. this is when i care about what's actually going on around me it's when you're walking to the bus to make yeah. sure you don't yeah exactly when i'm walking the bus when i'm sitting in my cube listening to a podcast um i also have it paired to my pc which is nice because it'll stop the podcast and i can answer my work line all that kind of stuff if you notice the link i shared is the refurbished people? Oh, okay. Buy refurbished. It will save you a ton of money. Mm -hmm. um, and both of this, you know, both the headset and the case are both refurbished items, and they're perfectly fine. I uh, have had 50, no problem. Uh, according to Amazon, fifty dollars for the earpiece and uh, twenty five for the case. Yeah, well, that's yeah. extremely it's, decent it's compared see? to the price. <laughs> the retail price of that device is not cheap. the retail price the, yeah is about a hundred dollars mm -hmm. just for the headset i think not including the charge yeah case. not wow. including the charge case so and the thing i like about that charge case is it also acts as a dock yes yeah so, you could actually take the headset here and i think it even shows it in the pictures it'll stand up okay so, cool but and that charges it also 
Did you get the Bluetooth dongle too? No, I did not buy the Bluetooth dongle. Because there's a slot in the case for the Bluetooth dongle. It's really yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> what is the blue? Wait, what was the Bluetooth That's for a device that doesn't have Bluetooth already. Oh. Oh, so it plugs into a dongle. Like, it plugs into can... a headphone. Yeah, so if you have like if you have like a desktop or an old laptop that doesn't have Bluetooth. Gotcha. Yeah. Or a, a decent Bluetooth radio. Mm-hmm. Um it actually you can it has a Bluetooth receiver that's yeah like real okay. small. Yeah, and like it, it slides into the case. It's like when you plug really in like nice. a wireless mm-hmm. mouse or something. The, so the, the, the thing that I was impressed too, if you if you use their if you get the Bluetooth receiver and you get it all in a bundle, the Bluetooth receiver is pre paired to the headset, so you never have to pair it. So yeah, you just plug it in and it works. It just it's automagic. It's automagic. like Apple made it or something. I'm trying to figure that out. Like I'm trying to figure out lift seem the lift uh, do doohickey uh, the lamp like yeah. seems to connect and I don't see it as like a Bluetooth device necessarily. Like it doesn't pop up like everything else. So hmm. it's been it's been really like is is it ever unpaired or anything? As long as it's on, it, it picks up and. That is not the case with anything else Bluetooth that I own. Is it? Do you think it's actually Bluetooth though? What else would it be? Some kind of frequency that we can't hear. I don't know, but there is there is something that when it turns speaker? on and I plug it in, there's a high high pitch like squeal sometimes. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, and since I don't know that there's a speaker of any sort on it, I don't know what that is. Hmm. So, if anybody lift, if you're um, mind wiping me while I'm driving for you, let me know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, hey, I want to give a shout out to our good friends on this network, and they got new episodes coming up here very, very shortly. Uh, check out our friends over on Pittsburgh, I'm sorry, comicbookpit.com uh, over there, one of the uh, great shows on this network. It's a new year, which means a new page for our friends at Comic Book Pit. That page happens to be the characters and speech bubbles. Tune in to the Comic Book Pit podcast for your uh, comic and comic book related news over at comicbookpit.com. And they just celebrated at the end of the year the 300th episode. And uh, they're looking to kick off here very soon for uh, the the 2019 season. Uh, Go check them out. And, of course, uh, they have live streaming, uh, uh, keeping you out uh, Mondays and Sundays a couple times a month. They'll go online on their Facebook Live with some live recordings and record a couple episodes. You can join in on the chat room. So make sure also follow the Comic Book Pit uh, Facebook page so you get notifications on that as well. So thank you so much uh, to our good friends, Comic Book Pit, for being on the network here. All right, we got a good bit of uh, stories from the uh, the crews out there um, and the Awesome Cast group. I'm probably not going to hit on everything because holy crap, there's a lot of stuff. Or maybe we'll touch really quick on some of these two. Um, one from Brandon, I, and I didn't get too deep into this because I feel like I kind of glossed it over. And whenever I saw the, <laughs> whenever I saw the uh, title for this one, I thought it was like just a BS like link bait kind of thing because it showed up in that little Google like recommendations thing. Mm-hmm. And I've had some I've seen- really questionable content. <laughs> I, I've seen this numerous times in my Facebook feed, and it okay. looks like one of those. Hey, for nineteen ninety five, we can solve every problem that you'll ever have. Yeah. So, like so that, Amazon is reportedly working on a new video game streaming service. Now, this is nothing new. PlayStation bought um, something that sounded weird, and now that's how they stream their PlayStation mm-hmm. Plus. It was something like Gaikai or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right. Uh, On Live was one. I can't, I can't remember if that got purchased by Microsoft, maybe for some back end. Uh, Microsoft, I think. Yeah. Well, Microsoft like. is working on something. Yeah. So is Verizon. Yeah. Right. Verizon's working on something supposedly, but uh, I don't know. Was there anything? Did you guys catch any any details that make the Amazon one seem a little more realistic? I mean, we have we have had um, you know Project Stream gameplay happening. Uh, Microsoft's Pro- Project X Cloud is one. Google, Google's Project Stream was uh, you you could purchase and play Assassin's Creed Odyssey, a brand new. Assassin's Creed on your in your browser um, through the cloud. So this is this is nothing new, and this is again just a hey guys, we hear that there's something going on out there. Um, we heard from the information via GameIndustry.biz. <laughs> so this is like this is like the wrestling ads. Um, they say the, 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 the yeah. I mean this is this is a thing I've heard. The the, the service uh, looks to eliminate expensive hardware and run graphically taxing games. Um, that's, that's what they've been trying to work on for the last 10 years, but it's more realistic. It's just kind of having a service around it that makes sense. Right. Yeah. But 
when you look at the pricing of a lot of these services, like I've even seen where, you know, they advertise, hey, we'll set you up a gaming rig in the cloud. Yeah. And then, you know, you can play from your mobile phone. You can play from anything. God, Xbox was supposed to run on Azure, wasn't but it? Then you start, but then you start actually pricing out what the monthly fee is. And, mm-hmm. you know, even if it's $25, $30 a month, eventually you're going to hit that point where you've purchased the computer. Mm-hmm. Although you, I guess there's no upgrades. And, there's no upgrades and there's there, typically it's like a Netflix <sighs> library, right? It's like... Yeah, you're gonna have a huge a library, library of games. Library of games. But how many more monthly fees can I pay? Uh, that's my <laughs> problem, especially when they're going up like Netflix, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's going up again. I read about that. Is today. it really? You know, again? I'm not sad about that. I'm not sad about that. I'll pay 13 bucks for my family's gonna have Netflix. to start chipping in. Chipping if you in. know what I'm talking I did, about. I did. I did cancel. Although I did cancel. Did you see they're using an AI, AI algorithm that's supposedly gonna keep people from sharing. Oh, really? Oh, oh, there you go. Well, one of them lives in the same house as me. I think so, you'd be safe with that. So technically, yeah. it's But it's not like, did part. I give it to three of my friends that live no, in no, God no. knows where, right? It's nothing like that. Um, no, I think, I, I think, no, no, I have no problem with that. I just canceled Hulu, and I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready, guys. I'm getting ready for the world where I say, hey, I'm going to get DC Universe this month to watch the shows I want. Hey, I want to get to Disney this month to catch up on the shows I want to watch. I'm already doing it with wrestling things. I, I signed up for New Japan this month because their big WrestleMania just happened. I'm probably going to cancel after this month, and I don't know. Maybe I'll pick up like Ring of Honor for a little bit or something, right? Yeah. Or just catch up on my WWE. I'm going to do the same thing with HBO. Yeah. S- as soon as Game of Thrones See, comes on, I'll turn it on, and, and then, then when it's done, now, I'm shutting it back off. I'm fortunate because I have HBO as part of my AT and T plan. Ah. Uh, and then I have Prime Video, so I kind of don't need much more to have something to watch you know the netflix originals though are there's they're good they're tremendous have like, you watched you what have you watched you y-o-u <laughs> i thought we we're going into who's on first no. uh <laughs> no i haven't if watched you that. get a chance to watch you watch what you. is what is you it's like a psychological thriller about a guy that becomes obsessed with this guys woman. listen listen let's okay i blasted through shira I want I just finished the entire series of Voltron. We're catching. We just caught up on Iron Fist. We just started on Daredevil. Punisher comes out at the end of the week, and I know those are all things that are going away. But still, beyond Wait, that, Punisher's going away. Every, everything is going away. They're getting canceled yeah. as soon as they come out because of the Disney thing. Um, they, they're just transferring to the new yeah. whatever. Um, uh, they they pick up these weird cartoons. Like I was the one, the Hollow. They started listening. I started watching, which is like Lost meets like just messed up cartoon. Um, there's a, a, a cupcake at Dino. I still that. need to. I think you should. You, you should. When you really okay. just want to, or there's the there's the one with the, the 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 red panda that's that screams death metal. That one's fun. I can't remember the name of it right now. I'm finding a lot. That's <laughs> what I'm trying to say. And Solo. Hello. Solo just came on. <laughs> somebody, that's how I pointed that out. Like, if you noticed, everything Disney Marvel is on there as long as they can <laughs> before yeah. it goes away for the Disney service. Um, but it is, you know, it, it, it's great. It, you know, there's half the time it the movies I haven't caught are popping up on the service, and 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 the originals are good enough to make me happy to have it i also was just told about a movie called anon i have not yet watched yes. it i have not yes i've heard very good things very it's another good netflix, netflix original, original called anon a-n-n-o-n yeah um in uh, uh carbon uh help me out carbon, carbon black carbon no not carbon black altered carbon altered carbon it was is gonna get a lot of spinoffs and stuff i'm looking forward to see how that goes um yeah there's there's you know a lot of weird sci-fi like anon is on there mm-hmm. um there's there's a few of those so no definitely definitely worthwhile yeah those arcs is good if you, if you yeah. watch that so much my my stepson you know he has the apartment upstairs mm-hmm. when we did the you know the cord cutting and went to do the direct tv now when i got the free um 4k uh apple tv I offered him the old Apple TV so he could essentially, quote unquote, get cable. Mm -hmm. And he is yet to want it. Like every couple of weeks I'll say, hey, Drew, you want me to come up? And he's like, "Mm, no, I'm okay." Because 
he's got it, pretty much Netflix. That's he. There's all, always something. All you need. Yeah. So I want to kind of touch on a couple more of these ones from uh, our Facebook group for Awesome Casting. And please jump in there. A lot of conversation around these things as well. So this was interesting. Ubisoft has announced that the PC version of The Division 2, pretty big ge- games on PC. I think it was a big, like they showed off the first one when the Xbox was coming out, right? Um, they are going to be uh, moving that title to the Epic game service instead of Steam. And it seems like everything comes out on Steam unless you have like your own service. Like I think, didn't Ubisoft have their own Uplay service as well where you could buy games? But did EA has theirs. But didn't Epic come back and like they're taking less of a cut? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I think, the big enticement. Um, and I'm hearing that's why Netflix, not, not that I want to go back to the whole Netflix story, but Netflix is not allowing you to bill through Apple anymore. Yeah, they took that away. So because everyone gets a cut when mm-hmm. that happens. So mm-hmm. I'm guessing that's why is because Epic is taking less of a cut. And Epic is big enough that it's not going to go away yeah it seems i mean they're it's kind of like how steam was built on half-life 2 back in the day and the things that they put out team fortress 2 etc cetera, etc cetera. um epic is built on the fortress uh, i'm sorry the fortnite, fortnite the the fortnite foundation isn't that kind of an interesting <laughs> as, uh, as long as they can keep the lawsuits down of of dance infringements yes that and uh <laughs> a, a, and carlton wants his money there's, man. no i heard there's a, there's a mom <laughs> suing for her kid like some kid did a did some kind of dance and they oh oh geez pe- okay people threw it up on Fortnite and yeah thanks Riz for sharing that and also apparently Bungie is separating from Activision and taking uh, Destiny with them mm-hmm. wow I heard there's gonna be there's lawsuits or geez, stuff going into that I, I I did I'm surprised that was such a big a big uh, purchase for them uh, back in the day. Um, also another one, here's one from Alex Cars out there on the West coast. Uh, he has, this is his awesome thing of the week. It's a, a Western digital's wireless drive, um, that I think he's got his hands on here. Whoop. Let me pick the right thing over here. Um, he says a note from him is awesome thing of the week is, uh, this bad boy is a, a, a W a Western digital, my cloud home. Uh, it's a NAS that it was pretty, pretty easy to set up. Um, though making a media server with Plex was not quite as easy. Has Plex not gotten like that easy with stuff, or is it just maybe this? I device? think it's when it's like when you're trying to get it to work with a NAS, or you're trying to get the NAS to run the Plex server itself. Mm-hmm. I think it's some kind of times be difficult because obviously Plex may do an update, and the typically the Plex plugins for these types of things have to also be updated. Mm. Um, the interesting thing I think about this though is, and I'm seeing this more and more, this privacy take on cloud so instead of storing your data in google he's storing it on a drive in his house Mm -hmm. yeah in his own quote-unquote cloud yeah Mm -hmm. and when you think about like the wise cam and you can put the sd card in it and they don't have any kind of backup yeah they don't have a service for that they expect you to take care of that for privacy reasons Mm -hmm. I i think this is really interesting and i wonder if we'll see more of these types of devices crop up that are easier for the mainstream user to kind of put together at their house without having to put together like open source NAS with port forwarding on mm-hmm. a on a router, all kinds of crazy stuff to make it work. This is this there, type of thing I think is because I I'm in, I'm in the phase where I'm putting everything. I'm I'm just shoving all my media up on the cloud right now. Um, backups. I was talking to the crowd about some of the personal media. Um, mm-hmm. projects that we have that I'm, I'm backing up right now. Um, is there is there an easy way to access stuff like that from a driver Dropbox? Is there an easy way to access what? Like lots of movies. With a client. With a client, yeah. Yeah. You would just use the client. Now, I and I don't know, does Plex let you? Abby, here, yeah, can you use your Google app, I'm, I'm, can you use your Google Drive cloud as a source? I wonder because otherwise, like when you put when you put videos up on the drive, it basically turns into like it's back rendering and turning into a YouTube video in your drive. Right? Oh, but you ever notice that when you put a video up there and yeah, then it's like a YouTube probably, they're player? They're transcoding it on the yeah, fly. they're transcoding in the background, you know. But but I don't think it's in a fly. I think, I think they're pre preparing it from the one I've seen. I'd be surprised if they were pre transcoding it for a multitude of devices i'm not surprised at all because it's google and they have a lot of everything so if you're ios you have the files app 
Mm -hmm. which you can navigate there and play right from right, there. Right, right. And, and I, then also, if you get a chance, check out File Explorer. Wait, is this the thing that used to play the Super Nintendo games? I think no, it's that one. was a different thing. <laughs> but it allows you to add like multiple in your cloud. different I mean, otherwise, sources. sources. The reason I like File Explorer because it does dry, like I have, I can do um, SMB and AFP shares in my and SIF shares in my house. Yeah. So I can map I can map drives to my phone through File Explorer. Yeah. Which is which is nice for home because then I actually mm. then sync video down mm -hmm. to the device. <laughs> Run across is shaking his head. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> to your phone. He said to his to not his to phone. his tablet, to his Dude, I just pull, I pull up Google Drive and I have a copy of my DVD Thor ripped to it and um and I just want to watch Thor. It, nice. It, that's all the stuff I want to. I, I and all that stuff is sitting up on the shelf and it's all ripped off and on the thing and uh you know like Chachi had me rip all of his DVDs so he had them and I was like here here are they on the Google Drive you have them mm -hmm. you know um it, it makes sense and stuff you own right. Uh, so it's everything. And it's just there now. It's weird because it's like this divide of the stuff I had on DVD slash the stuff that I have on like movies anywhere. You like, know, it's interesting because I ripped all of our home DVDs. Mm -hmm. Remember to Jamie's map. Mm -hmm. And so they saw it sit there so we could, you know, basically have a video jukebox from the Apple TV of all these, this movies and all the DVDs are still sitting in my basement in a mm -hmm. box. Mm -hmm. But the idea of taking all that data and dragging it to Google. Mm -hmm. All it is, what, all it is, I don't is have, to, you pointing, have to worry about backing it up all it anymore. Is, is pointing to the folder. But how much? It. How much are you paying for your Google Drive? Yeah, ten bucks a month for two terabytes. For two terabytes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Remember they upped that. Yeah. I, I don't. I I don't pay for any cloud. And if I actually yeah, cleaned I up my more. old projects, I'd have so much more room. Okay. <laughs> and I did ten bucks a month or two terabytes. Wow. Yeah, and you rip a DVD; it's under a gig, gig piece usually, so it's like seven hundred movie. Meg. Yeah, depends. Oh yeah, because I think I have about a terabytes mm -hmm. worth of movies. All right, one more, one more from the group, and I, I, I want to touch on this. But uh, this was one from uh, Dave Ponder, our good friend with the uh, Tiny Shutter podcast. Uh, so Instagram. Hey, remember when Instagram used to be just photos and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Remember when Instagram, you couldn't even, like, you had to take the picture live? I think yeah, at one point in time, yeah. it had to be a live picture. Oh, yeah. man, those were the days, the purity <laughs> that was Instagram. But now, they have an update that uh, you can now send voice memos in an Instagram message. You really don't use the Instagram message messenger, but uh, he doesn't really use the Instagram messenger. What I'm sure someone does, and now you can use Instagram for voice chats, just like you can with every other social platform. You know what? The last time I used this, other than random just reactions to things, um, I think I got a booking through Instagram messenger several months ago, because <laughs> that's just where I connected with the guy, and uh, and we ended up like you know filming a wrestling show or something, right? So, uh, so it's not unheard of but you know it is it is weird some people live in it though so i mean some people like instagram is their facebook so yeah. i just look at the it, and it's not the instagram i mean i like instagram don't get me wrong but voicemail like <laughs> voice like, what like what voice what like i can't tell you the last time i've actually listened to a voicemail Mm -hmm. like if i if i see someone what do you call, mean at work i see they called and i call them back <laughs> oh flag on the flag i got an email i got an email today i was like hey make sure you call me before this time today or in the morning i'm just like can we just do this on email please can i just 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 tell me when you're just let's just do this come on well the other weird thing is and i will say like even at work even at work it's typically an instant message that says hey can i call and <laughs> if you're texting me the call <laughs> that's very good. like no, i, you're I right. you're rarely right. do unless it's like an ex and here's the other thing is if it's an external person trying to sell me crap you don't I, care anyway <laughs> hey you know who i got a message from the other day on instagram our good friends at Slice on Broadway. That's nice. who I did. I did. I did. actually every one of our Instagram accounts. <laughs> so <laughs> are they the, are they the topping Tuesday? What is that? What uh, 
Is there th- is that their thing? So I got it. I got it because I signed up for their like club. Their club. Yeah. And I got a text today, and it says it's topping Tuesday. One free topping on any large pizza. Order online and use top twos at checkout. But nowhere in here, there's a picture of a, of a pepperoni pizza. Oh. But nowhere in here does it tell me who this is from. Oh, is that them? <laughs> I don't know. If that's them. That doesn't look like their pizza. I don't know. Did you sign up for? Did you sign up for the other guys? No, I didn't. That's why this is super weird that I got this. Are you getting pizza spam? I'm getting pizza spam because they know that you're you're coming here every Tuesday and having some slice on Broadway before the show, Chilla. But even They're if jealous. I wanted, so even if, so, if this isn't slice on Broadway, yes, I don't even know where to to why use you, my online discount. You need to re- top no, no, no. Respond to them. Who are you? Checkout. What? But it's who? it's one of those vanity th- three nine one eight seven. Respond. Like, who are you? <laughs> New phone, who dis? <laughs> <laughs> like, new, new pizza, who dis? Anyway, Slice on Broadway, they got a lot going on. They're on Instagram. They have some pizza club and everything going on as well. Uh, go check them out. They're over on SliceOnBroadway.com. They're right here in Beach with the original, the OG. Carnegie PA in the East End and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Go check them out. Let them know the awesome cast sent you as well. I know I, I get a lot of messages have over the last few years of uh, people checking out our good friends at Slice on Broadway and have, I mean, uh, Krause, you were, whoop, that's the wrong button. Krause, you were going, you were loving, you're loving, you're like, why isn't there any in my area? I'm there you, you go. There's a Broadway over in McKee's Rocks. Why isn't there a Slice on it? That's a good question, Kraus. It is a very good question, and I would love to have an answer because I want right. some Slice. Slice on Broadway. I've had it two weeks in a row now, and answer I'll this be jonesing man. next week. Side note, also send tacos his way. Anyways, yes. we're solving all the problems of McKee's Rise with tacos and pizza, sir. That's right. That's, <laughs> that will solve all those problems. All problems will go away. All pro- <laughs> Just what we need, another pizza joint and some tacos. Oh, we do need some tacos, though. Yes, makes the world go round. All right, uh, we we don't have a whole lot of time here uh, for the back half of the show, but <laughs> um, real quick, what's uh, what's kind of the best thing you you guys want to talk about here out of the uh, the list? Chilla. There was a what lot of news this week. You want to talk about the hole punch phone? The yeah, hole the punch hole punch phone? phone. What is the hole punch phone? So we talked about notches last week coming oh, to laptops. Don't get me started. Are you anti notch? Chilla, did you see me going off about the 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 reverse notch laptop? No. Oh, yes. You need the go reversal. Listen. Go listen to last. Time. Go listen to last week's show, sir. I will. I will. Yeah. I will. If you get on to there's the whole punch phone link. Oh, okay. So this is a different take. Why not have? Let's not have a notch. Let's just have a hole punch. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We got a hole punch. Okay. So I'm bringing it up here. Uh, the honor of U20. Is that what it is? Yep. The wait, honor. Wait. Oh wait, wait, wait. Oh. Yeah, oh, how about that? So, so it's a phone with a hole <laughs> punch. It's 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 edge to edge, and then if you look in the upper left, you're like, why does that look that screen look a little funny in the corner? Because that's where there's just a hole in the screen, and there's a camera there, right next to like the T-Mobile exactly. you know, da thing, right? I just, now here, I think they should have centered it. I don't. I like it there. I don't. I don't mind it. Yeah, because I'm so used to looking in the up, like in the so here's the thing, right? So in the upper left, that's where I swipe down. So I'm going to swipe my finger across my camera all the time and dirty that up. Mm-hmm. That's that's where the <laughs> that's just the I carrier mean, information belongs. I mean, that's where notifications carrier info, like that's not where see, the camera goes. But the problem is, though, John. <laughs> You're thinking Apple. This is Android. Even on my Samsung device that had as Wait, who has made a this? forehead, the camera is centered. Right, but you're still swiping from the top to bring up your um, cards. Yeah. And you could swipe from anywhere. It doesn't have to be but, on the left so, or on the so right. This is the Honor View 20. Yes. What is the manufacturer for this? Huawei. Huawei. Oh, Huawei. Oh, yes. wow. Are we just like not saying so we it? won't be getting so, that in the U.S.? Nope. <laughs> Gonna have to import that one. No, but the thing is, though, the back of it is fabulous too. Did All you right, see let that? Me, let me let me look. There's up the a whole here. punch back there too. No, it's got this great, like 
Ooh. optical kind of illusion oh, kind of thing yeah. blue thing that's just is awesome. it like a shiny thing going on yeah there? and it's like mirrored and you when you move right. it moves so, when you like turn the so, so here i'm gonna it's tell a, you it's what a this, shiny what, blue i have an iphone case like that and i'll tell you what it's great for fingerprints mm-hmm. no making that device slide off of anything and everything <laughs> well that's a problem with all these phones they're slick and they'll slide off everything right yeah, yeah. that's what i mean that's what the this is the biggest Problem I had the two weeks before I grabbed the case for this thing for the uh, the eight plus it was just but like seriously Whoop. though Sorg if you scroll down a little further okay in that same article it shows the Pixel three with the notch and then the hole punch oh and, we have a comparison and I'm sorry here. but it, if you look at the two the hole punch is definitely <laughs> what less doing? what are we doing. <laughs> I still think front-facing cameras should be centered. Where is it? Oh. Even, I mean, on your laptop, they're centered. Mm-hmm. On most phones. Okay. And not by your keyboard. They're close centered. Not by your keyboard. They're close, right. So, I don't know. I. That's a less obstructive, I, I, I think. <laughs> Either way. I would buy it. It's an experiment, and yes. I bet you eventually there will be one in the middle. You would buy it yes. over a Pixel? No, but I would buy it. <laughs> Well, no. If, if money was no, no object, if I would, money was I would no have object, one of each. Of course not. If money was no object, but if money being an object, the, the, those devices have great specs mm-hmm. for a pretty reasonable price. And you're not dealing with any government secrets, so you're in the clear. How, well, how often are they are they kept up? They are now, yes. Okay. Yeah, the Huawei's done pretty well. Although, like you said, coming from China, that's an issue now. There could yeah. be problems there, but all right. All there's right. viruses well, we'll on see. your phone. There's a bonsai buddy on your phone. <laughs> By the way, if anybody doesn't know what bonsai buddy is, please tweet me. If 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 you get a Huawei and Clippy comes up, and <laughs> Clippy, <laughs> you, you guys, sorry, you got problems. <laughs> you got problems. If a purple monkey pops up on your phone, you also have problems. Um. Anyways, uh, please, you guys know who bonsai buddy is, right? You guys remember that, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll have that mm-hmm. conversation off air. Uh, <laughs> Chilla, what do you got here? I picked hole punch. Oh, you picked hole punch? Yeah. Well, that was it was Krauss's article, I but I picked, picked it. it. Um, how about and this is an easy one. So go to the improve your audio with Windows Xbox app. Okay. So as it, one of the things that I read on uh, during the holiday was is depending on your headphones, you could actually get Dolby Atmos through headphones. Ooh. Um via an app. So you literally have to pay for, I'm guessing it's because of the licensing of the technology, but there's a Dolby Atmos app for both Windows and wait, wait, Xbox. Wait, 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 wait. wait. So the Microsoft uh, headphones is $15. The Best Buy Plantronics ones are $150. Right, but, but the interesting thing to all these headphones that support this mm-hmm. is they all require, no, the, the Microsoft Dolby Atmos for headphones, that's an app. With, oh. a, with a complimentary driver. That's a $15 app? It's a $15 app, oh. which was on to sale make, over the to, holidays. To make your $150 headphones work? Yes. <laughs> which was on sale over the holidays for like $3.97. Jeez. And I'm like, this can't be this good. This is too good to be true. I'm like, I'm going to spend the 4 bucks to see what it gets me. It actually sounds amazing. To the point where I actually then went out and got a pair of Rig 600s. To e- make it sound even better, mm-hmm. but the just out of the box Xbox dual ear headphones support Dolby Atmos, and the sound is pretty darn amazing. Like you get a nice three dimensional surround sound via nice. your headphones. It sounds like I mean, there's some demos where it literally sounds like the per like the person's running from behind you all the way around. 360 degrees. Oh, that's awesome. And, oh, by the way, Movies Anywhere, you can link to your Microsoft account. Yes. And there are movies in Microsoft's library that are Dolby Atmos. Really? Ready. Yes. So you buy it anywhere and you go to the Microsoft version and it has the Atmos already. Yes. Wow. So I highly recommend checking out the, at, at, at a minimum, the Dolby Atmos I, Microsoft app, and when you buy it, it then gives it to you for Windows 10 and for Xbox. Wow. You also, also just, I because I forgot about the Microsoft thing, I just realized that all those movies are available on my Xbox to watch. Yes. Oh. Does that include 360? I guess it would, because it's the same store. 
I would think so. Ooh, that is so. Now, like all my movies are on like all these extra boxes. I, well, that's they're cool. on everywhere. Everything. They're everywhere. Okay, real quick. Uh, Kraus, because like I guess I gave Chilla two. I'm gonna have to. Give Does it that count? count. Uh, okay. Um, we can talk about the um. Gamers Surface Pro. Have you seen this? No. This is called the Rog Mothership. <laughs> the what? It, it's it, an Asus. R- ROG is something from Jeez. Republic of Gamers. It looks thick. So, but this is basically, well, it's 10 pounds, so let's just start there. Jeez. <laughs> Look at the, the video is actually pretty good. I gave you a separate yeah. link for the video. Yeah, I'll get over to it. Um, but, you know, it's basically the surface, you know, form factor for with a detachable keyboard. And you can play your high-end uh, PC games on the it. The keyboard rolls over the, 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 the front of it, right? Yeah. Is that what I'm seeing here? Oh, yeah, it attaches, sweet. it detaches. See how he just detached it and folded yeah, it up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's essentially, you know, the gamer's version of the Surface. That's amazing. You should see the fans in it. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it probably sounds like it's going to take off all oh, the time. Oh, I'm sure. And will melt your lap. Yes. Jeez. That's the Asus ROG Mothership, if you want to check yeah. it out. It's a 17-inch, 10-pound Surface Pro. I think it's Republic of Pro. Gamers. Jeez. You know you're serious if you want your slim, and I'm using air quotes for you who can't see me, slim tablet to have a full-sized Ethernet port. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, geez. Well, on that note, I think it's enough crazy from the future. What the hell is going on here uh, for the show? I want to give a shout out first to our friend Alexander Cars uh, doing some really great designs out there. He's putting together a puzzle of design and media from branding to print and digital projects. House can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even uh, photo and video projects. You can go check out alexcars.media to get started. And uh, please go check that out as uh, Alex Cars. Uh, K A H R S dot media to get started uh, over there. And thanks, thanks uh, for being a part of the network as well. He's got a few shows with Occupy Ro- Pro Wrestling that he does here with the uh, network as well. Uh, so go check him out. Uh, coming up, like I said, we got some shows coming up uh, next. Um, next week we got uh, Mr. John Carmen will be joining us here in the studio. Uh, like I said, Bobby Cherry is going to be coming up, and we're talking with some other people about coming in the show. Uh, and for the show as well. Um, we will also have coming up, uh, if I can pull it up here, uh, Pittsburgh Current. If you guys listen to that there live or if you check out the podcast afterwards, uh, we will have a very special edition of the Pittsburgh Current podcast coming up on Friday at noon. And we're going to have uh, Ari Spears from uh from matt tv is going to be uh in the studio with us for the podcast he's doing a a few uh stints over at the pittsburgh improv i believe uh this weekend and he's going to be stopping in when he gets into town friday and joining uh charlie deach and bethany here on the show for the pittsburgh current podcast go check them out uh as well and uh other than that i think that is the major live stuff we have going on here this week at sorgatron media studios um Jeez, I think that's it. Producer Missy, am I missing anything? Checking it. Okay. Her, she said she said, she said her attention. I can't afford that. Uh, <laughs> thank you, of course, Crazy Krause for joining us. Where can people find you online? Crazy Krause on Twitter. Ron Krause on Facebook. It's Crazy Krause with all the Ks. Yep. Yes. John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. Chillatech.net, John Chill on the Facebook. At Sorgatron on the Twitter if you want to talk to me about Bonze Bodies and uh, ICQ and AIM and what I didn't do in the 90s. Uh, <laughs> I what? forgot to mention, DJ. What? You're a rapper. I didn't know you were a rapper. You just found out I was a rapper? I saw the video. I mean, video. It, was like, it was like 10 years ago. But I you, saw the video. You saw the video. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I saw the video. Yeah, they did the Facebook thing. Like the one thing I do, the Facebook like then and now thing, and, and yes. that like blew up this whole thing. Thing. I yeah. bring it, I try to bring it up every so often because I realize I know new people that don't know the past me, uh-huh. uh, and some of the things I used to do. So yeah, it's awesome. We've done some things. 
<laughs> there's a lot of YouTube videos out there too. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at you look you, you dig into that YouTube account, there's a lot of stuff going on there. And I didn't know it was on YouTube. I didn't know like the entire album's on YouTube. So, but that makes sense. So I can't get them to take it down. <laughs> I tried. Give them a takedown notice. <laughs> I tried. I tried. There's reasons Please I tried. Please take it down. But, yes. Oh well, at least I didn't use my. I, did I use my name on that? I don't know. Anyways, thank you so much, everybody. Okay. For being part of the, you have been our awesome chat room, including Alex Cars and Dave Potter uh, and my mom out there as well tonight. <laughs> Thanks, mom, and uh, so much more. Thank you, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.